Hey everybody, it's Jochen Haydn, and today I'm going to be doing another tutorial video. It's been a while, but uh, this one's by popular demand. Um, I'm probably a little late to the game with this. I think a lot of people have been using this for a long time. But if you're like me and you're just now cracking into it, let's learn it together, okay? So what we're going to be talking about today is Combat Reporter. And the reason that I'm even bringing this up is because um, somebody on my Discord, Nomad, who's been playing this game forever... And somebody I trust has been railing on me for a long time to get this this program. And basically what Combat Reporter is, is it's a thing. It's a program that combines all your SIG and Ops reports, the combat reports, and puts it into this program here that kind of sorts it out for you better. So you don't have to be searching around the map to figure out what heck something is in. It'll show you for you. And it just kind of consolidates everything and, and builds it and archives it for you. I haven't been using it. I want to start using it because I'm starting to miss stuff. I'm starting to lose track of where things are at. Um, I'm getting lazy about looking at where this hex is at, right? If, if it says uh, heavy radio traffic reported in, in, in hex, this or that, it I don't like to click around and find it. I just kind of let it go. Uh, this program should help me focus my energies a little bit better. So um, the easiest way for you to find it would be to go to the forums, the Matrix forums, and just type in Combat Reporter in the main Warren Pacific Admirals Edition uh, forum. I will also put a link to this forum post in the video description. And it's going to take you to this post and just go to page one. And basically where you're going to get the, so the software is going to be right here on this website. So let's go there now. All right. You click on that. It's going to take you to this website. And from there you're going to download the Combat Reporter zip file version 1.1 is the most current one yes it says 2015 i know that seems like a long time ago but this game's been around a long time uh this is the one you want so what you're going to do is you're going to download it and in my case it's going to go into um my download folder right and then basically from there i'm going to just transfer that to my desktop and you need a, you'll need a program that can unzip stuff. I I just go. I already have one. I use WinRAR, and I'm gonna go extract extract files. And I'm gonna extract it to my desktop. Okay, and here we go to the desktop. Okay, and it made a folder. Let's take a look at it. Open it up, and like any good uh, tool, software tool comes with a, a PDF, so we can keep track of what we're doing here wow cool so here's the uh the readme it's a pdf file let's go down to installation uh so it looks like it's gonna run off of your archive file your archive directory so i think what we need to do then to run this is run the uh batch file okay right here so you go into your combat reporter batch file and you hit this file right here, Windows batch file, combat report. You run that. And then you're gonna come up on this combat report preferences. And this first one is gonna be your main game, uh, your main game installation directory. And in my case, I installed it to the default location right here. I didn't change anything in the initial path. So that goes here. And this is, and it's going to use your whatever map mod you're using. It's going to use that artwork for that map mod to build the map in this program. Okay. Um, so if you're using the stock map, you'll see the stock map. If you're using like the rich info map, like I use, that's the one that will show you. That's pretty cool. Now here we need to go to our save directory, and in my case, I run the archive file, and that's important because it's that's how it's going to get all of its old data. So I'm going to go to save and go to archive and hit open. All right. Now from here, this is where you're going to tell it uh, what real calendar date you want it to start grabbing information from. In my case, um, I want it to grab from maybe the beginning of February. So today's date is the 23rd of Feb, 2023. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go 0201. Two three, and the time is going to be like one 
a.m. Okay. The next thing, this monitor interval, uh, I don't recommend you mess with it. And this is what it says about the monitor interval. Um, right here. You can read this yourself. The monitor interval indicates how often combat reporter will scan for changes. Default 60 seconds. Uh, it recommends to leave it. So we're going to leave it. The last thing we're going to do is um, select allies. And I'm going to click save. So it's all, this should all be set up now. Hit save. Now, to get it to actually run, we're going to close this file. And we're going to run the combat report batch file again. So let's do it. Boom. Like, look, look at that. So, um, this is, it pulled all of the archive files that we have in the game uh, since the 1st of February. Of, that's 23 days ago. Now, you'll notice the dates are a little split, right? We have the 10th of January and the 24th of March. That's because right now, and rather stupidly, I don't recommend this, I am using the same game install to run both the Lodric and the Helsing campaigns. My intent is to split them up so we don't have issues like this. Because right now, my archive files are being shared um, by both campaigns, and it makes things more hard to figure out. So I will be splitting those up into separate installs like my Desert Wolf campaign. I have that on another install. But what we want to talk about is the Lodric campaign stuff today. This is what I'm going to show you, and there you go. If you want more information than that, you would go into your preferences and put this date to something further in the past. Like, I could go all the way back to May of 2022 when I started playing the Lodric campaign, and I could grab all that information, but I don't really want to do that right now. So, um, there we go. So, the next thing we're going to do is take a look at what this program can actually do. So, for example, I'm going to go ahead and maximize this thing now. So I can have a bigger map. See how much map this thing takes up? Dang. <laughs> That's a lot of map, huh? These 4K monitors, man. Anyway. So, uh, let's open up March 27th, 1942. And as you can see, it breaks down all of the actionable information from your last turn. And it separates it into stuff. So let's take a look at SIGINT, for example. Um, and then it will subdivide that. So SIGINT. It will tell you, for example, when you click on attack, it'll tell you um, what what units from the SIGINT are planning to attack and where, right? Look at that. And when you click on information, it will take you to the location on the map that they're planning for. Let's look at another one. Um, 22nd Independent Engineers located at Sion. So if I click on this, it will show us exactly where that is on the map and give you a hex. That's pretty cool, right? Wow, that's cool. Uh, let's try another one. Uh, 39th Field Anti-Aircraft Battalion located at Rabal. So if I click on this, it takes you to Rabal. And if you hold your mouse over it, it will give you the hex. That's so cool. I can't believe I haven't been using that before. Let's try another one. Um, 52nd Division is located on an AK moving to Suva. So if I click here, it'll show you where Suva's at. Click here, it'll show you where Molemine's at. So are you guys getting the picture here? This is really cool. And this is probably, the next thing I'm going to show you is probably the one that's the most important to me uh, for SIGINT. These radio transmissions, right? Um, this is what I've been lazy about in my game, uh, looking up where these locations are for heavy radio transmissions, for example, right? If I click here, it will take me right to the hex on the map. And again, this is the artwork for my game right now. I'm running this, this special map mod. It will take you directly to where it is that that radio transmission was at. That's really helpful because... The game is not very intuitive as to where your hexes are at. You have to click around and look in the top right corner of the game to find out what hex you're even in. This thing just makes it easier for you. That's really cool. Right, let's try some some other information like the ops report. Okay. Um, what is that? Unknown stuff, huh?
Okay, I guess the unknown stuff it doesn't like. Oh, okay. Uh, some stuff it doesn't want to click on, I guess. That's okay. Let's try submarine. Um, K7 reports having been sighted by the enemy at 112-135. So, instead of me looking all over the dang place for where the heck is K7 and where is that hex, if I just click on that, it will take me right to it. And then Hudson long range attacking a sub at there. Okay, I have an idea of where this unit's at, but if I want to know exactly what hex it's in, look, if I just click here, it'll take me to exactly where that attack occurred. Man, this is useful. And again, when you leave your mouse hovered over the hex, the numbers pop up on the map too. Man, this is cool. Let's see what else. Uh, let's see. DD Talbot begins refit while under repair at Pearl. Takes you to Pearl. This takes you to Brisbane. Oh man, this music's putting me to sleep. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, okay, let's try some more. A Japanese. So, let's see. Uh, Japanese torpedo bomber sighted over 18th Chinese Corps. Well, that doesn't really help me much, right? So, it's only going to help you if it gives you a location, I guess. See that? So, if, if, if it's over a red Chinese army, right? That doesn't really help much. But if it gives you an actual uh, base... It'll take you there. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Some of the stuff that um, that just tells you like a unit, it won't take you there. But if it gives you a location, it will. Right here, sighting report. It will take you to exactly where the sighting report was at. Oh, wow. Oh! This is another really helpful thing. Uh, a lot of times, you, the game will tell you that a task force is out of fuel. Uh, and you're like, well, where the heck is this hex, right? So, um, you there's two ways you can go about this. You can go into the game and look up the task force. Find it in a list of task forces. Then click on it, and it'll take you to a location. Or, you can use this program here. And just click on the information here. And as long as there's a location specified... It will take you there. Uh, Task Force 266 detects Japanese float plane at 2948. Oh, it's so cool. All right. So let's see what else this thing does. Okay. So now this will take you to exactly where... Um, Oh, okay. Check this out. So this thing tells you um, a, a, a few a few pieces of information here, right? So this unit was basically attacked three different times, right? There's number three there. Watch. One attack, two attacks, three attacks. Watch here. This task force... Um, got attacked twice. Once by Vildebeest and once by my SPDs. And something else I want to show you is you see this letter V next to the um, next to the reports. The V means you have already viewed it. So, for example, do you see how this six Chinese uh, base force has the number one, uh, but no V? When I click on it, you notice a V arrives, and that lets you keep track of the fact that you have reviewed it, which I think is also really really cool, right? So if I want to go into like replacements here, um, well, okay, I I I guess it doesn't work for for that that sort of thing, but it works down here for other stuff like uh, okay, wherever there was actual combat or or some sort of activity combat related, if I click on here, you get the V to see what it was. Okay. I get it. Well, uh, I think this is pretty self-explanatory after that, right? Um, uh, you guys can kind of go through this and check on it yourself.
but I hopefully have given you some exposure as to what this program is. Uh, I'm sorry if I was kind of stumbling through this, but I this is literally the first time I'm using it myself, and I feel like I've already figured out how to use it. So um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask me in this in this video, post a comment, come over to my Discord, ask there, or go to the forums and ask on the forum as well. Uh, but uh, that post is like 300 uh, posts in it. <laughs> so your question may have already been answered there. So I hope you found this useful and I hope you start using this program because I sure am because this is going to make it a lot easier for me to sort through all the stuff I need to sort through. And then I'm going to have a nice record of everything I need and one easy to, uh, easy to read area, right? So I can quickly go back and reference previous turns and look and see where things are at or things have moved to. So uh, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching. And I'll catch you in the next one.